Let's go. Okay. Well, we've got to take a walk down to the studio now that I've just had built. Um, we've managed to buy another little plot of land that used to be a paddock um, because the garden was too small, really, to put a decent studio in. So we've, we've managed to open all this up and, and I've got this now, which is considerably better than what I had. When we moved here a year ago, uh, the only space I had to work was a, uh, a nine foot by seven foot box for them. And this has been hopeless, to be honest. Um, but I've managed, you know, everything that's gone into the new book that's just come out, that came that came out of this little box room. So, uh, don't know how I did that, but there you go, you have to do that. So, we've now got, you know, I've had this designed, it's all totally bespoke. It's, um, it looks bigger than it is, really. It's actually only four meters by six. But when it first went up, it looked like York Mint still, sort of going up in the garden. Um, what we're filming now is actually a little follow-up. We did the live Instagram feed uh, a little while ago, and because of our sort of rural location, oh, that's really, really windy, all the signal kept breaking up. So I hope anyone who watched it got something out of it, but we're just going to follow up with this little video now, so that hopefully should uh, should clear things up a little bit. And here's where we are now. <laughs> Come on in. Um, this is a, a, a super place to work. After what I've had to put up with over the last year, this is brilliant. Um, plenty of light, plenty of natural light, obviously. It's north facing. It's actually the first north facing studio I've ever had. And apparently, that's what you should have, apparently, is a con because you get a constant light then. Uh, so it's got a constant stream of light coming through all these windows. I've got much more in the way of. Um, artificial lighting coming in as well. This is, these are these sort of daylight bulbs and, and they're absolutely first class. Works really well for me in here. And it's all just a lovely place to be. Um, I've got my heaters ready for drying, paintings that are drying. Um, got the music system, which is vital, obviously. Oh yes. Uh, CDs all stacked up, brushes, paints. Uh, the table from Facebook Marketplace, 10 quid. Cheapskate. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's all great. And the piece I've got on the easel at the moment is just one that was, uh, we started during, a, well, it was one we were working on during the, we were trying to do this live thing. Um, and it was one that was started in one of the uh, live painting sessions in the galleries. So I've been playing around with that and I've been explaining earlier on this morning that I'm actually using a palette knife a lot more uh, for the first time ever. The last couple of months I've been investigating this. And it's, it's, it's a much more freer way of working. Uh, it's a, it sounds perverse, but it's actually less control. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I'm really enjoying it because I'm managing to loosen things up a little bit. And over the years, people have been kind enough to compare my work to Turner's, which is very flattering, but far from the truth, to be honest. But you know, it's nice to be, you know, to be mentioned in the same breath. Um, but I'm very aware of that that's, that's certainly a direction I want to take the work. A lot looser, uh, a lot more fluid, while still retaining that sort of quality that, that I've made my own, I suppose. So one of the questions that you were asked was, do you use the same palette knife for all of your paintings? I do at the moment. I have got other ones, but this little plastic thing just works for me at the moment. I've got, actually I'm lying, because there is another one, there's a metal one here that I use from time to time as well. And I actually just use this straight edge for printing on, like that, little waves. Just dip it in the paint and, and print those on. And then, then work that with a brush afterwards. Um, but no, it's just generally just this little plastic thing here. And that's, I'm putting the paint on a lot thicker than I used to, which means that really I can get away with less actual layers, less physical layers of paint. So another question was, what advice would you give to a new artist about how to start approaching galleries? 
Um, but it's very different these days than how it was in, in my day when I started. I sound like an old man now. Um, <laughs> In those days, you just painted your picture and you walked into the gallery and said, I've painted this, can you sell it, please? Um, it's now all media, isn't it? You can put work on disc. So what I would say is just approach as many galleries that you can find, really, and publishers. Build up a portfolio of your very best work. And even if it's work that you did five years ago, not, not yesterday, anything that you've, your highest quality work, and just, just keep pushing it in. At some point, it will stick. Somebody will see something that they like. Um, the, the piece of advice I offer most people, um, for young, younger painters, if they want to make it, um, two things really, produce work that's twice as good as what you're doing now and expect to get paid half of what you thought you were going to get, because that's generally the way it works, um, but just stick at it, just don't lose faith in yourself or your work. So, how much of an influence was your father to your art? Well, there was obviously a huge influence in getting me started, because he more or less said, well, why don't you just give it a go? Um, and I wouldn't be standing here now. None of this, none of this would exist without his, his input in the early days. And he was a very strong critic, but if you want to learn, <laughs> you've got to listen. Um, and yeah, yeah, I used to throw me toys out now and again, I should think, actually. Mm, there's nothing wrong with my work. But, no, he did. The, the biggest, the two biggest inputs that he gave me were, technique-wise, he, he showed me how to create the effect of distance on landscapes, looking across the, how soft and hazy things get. That was a big thing. Uh, and it's probably very prevalent in my work, because I tend to con concentrate on wide open spaces. And the other issue really was he said, um, he, he, gave, he gave me the discipline to work. If you're going to do this, you've got to work. You've got to put the hours in. And when you go full time, you, you've really got to go for it. And it's no good just thinking, oh, it's nasty. I'll pull the duvet over again, another and a half hour in bed. But it doesn't cut it. You've really got to put the hours in. So it was that sense of discipline to get in there and work. That was the other huge, vitally important thing he taught me. So what's the most important lesson you've learned in 20 years of creating art? Um, I'd say it's probably, it's probably two really, but as I said, stay with it, stick at it, keep your nose to the grindstone, keep working, um, and try and have some, get some faith in yourself as, as an artist, as in get, start to get some faith in your ability. It's only, it's only very recently that I've, yeah, how can I can actually remember which show it was. I did a live event a few months ago, and it was the first time where I've actually walked into a gallery and not pulled my work to bits. I actually walked in and thought, yeah, some of this is all right, actually. So this is quite nice. Some of it. I was actually quite happy with my own work. That's a big issue. If, if, if you get, start to get that faith in yourself, uh, you'll grow tenfold. You will be mature as an artist tenfold. That, that's, that's, a, that's a big lesson to learn. Very important one. Still got a lot to learn. Right? Still got to get better. <laughs> Not getting complacent. Don't get me wrong. So, have you ever worked with water-soluble oils? Uh, I haven't, no. Uh, I, love, I love oil paints, I love the traditional oil paints. I, I, I may give them a go at some point, um, but I don't, I don't see anything, any reason to deviate from, from what I'm doing now, really. I've still got a lot to learn with this medium. I don't think... I think it's a good idea if you've got a limited, um, a limited workspace, and you have to, especially if you have to work in the house. So gather they, they don't smell of anything. I think they're like because oil paints, you know, can be a bit pungent. You know, so I might give them a go. I might, but I'm I find it easier to just stick to one medium and learn how to do that well, which is what I'm you know, I'm still trying to do. Just um actually I had a lady come into one of the shows we did, I think we were in Bristol, and the lady came in and she while I was doing this live demo thing, she she described me as being at one with my materials. And I thought, that's lovely. I, that, that's, she made a number of very, very um, interesting comments, actually, that really resonated with me. And, uh, it, it, lovely feedback, actually. That was, that was a lovely thing to hear. And she actually painted herself as well. She, I, I don't know what capacity, but she was another artist. So when you, when you hear that, that's, uh, that's nice. 
So someone also asked if you use sketch pads and if so, could we see one? I, I don't enough, to be honest. I don't use them enough. I, I tend to draw, when I start in, you know, a, a new piece, I draw pretty much one line. I just get, I get my T-square and I'll put that in this panel and I'll just set my horizon line with a pencil straight across like that. And that's generally all the drawing I do. And I should do them. Um, we found some earlier on. Uh, little sketches that I've done years ago. I'd actually forgotten I'd done these. Totally um, different. Stuff like this. I've, I've forgotten all about this. Uh, things like this. Oh, that's lovely. And I, I need to do more of it. Drawing is a fantastic disorder. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> See, I've and you've it. got a cat, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. That's not her. I don't think <laughs> if it is, it's not very good. Um, but yeah, and... So, and I should do more of this. These are just simple little things. That, that's quite nice. Um, little ideas that I've sketched out, but I don't, I don't do enough of it. And I should, I mean, we live in a really rural area now. I can walk two minutes out of our front door. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and it's all lovely fields and trees and big clouds. And, um, I don't know why, and I should be, I should be taking advantage of this stuff. And I'm not, and it's, I'm, I'm aware of it. So, yeah, there's some sketch pads I can show you. They were probably done ten years ago, and I need to need to get my pencils out again. <laughs> so, how many layers are usually in one painting? It used to be um, up to six layers at one point because I was putting stuff on so thin, and I was using little jade cloths um, and things to dap all the paint and get a nice soft effect. And then I went on to the whole finger painting thing, using the finger, which I still do to a certain extent now. Uh, not so much since I picked up the palette knife because I have, I'm getting better, with better different effects with that. Um, so now I, I, I can probably cut them down to three or four layers of paints because I'm putting more along because I'm being less uh, fiddly. I'm, I'm being a bit more, a bit more free with it all. I'm putting a bit more paint on, so I, as a result, I can get less. I can get away with, with putting less actual um, physical layers on there. And and I'm, I'm really pleased with. The, the way they're going as well, they're a bit more loose. And how dry does a layer have to be before you work on the next one? Uh, as, as long as you can leave it, really, the drier the better. Because if it's not, um, as you've probably found out, you just start ruining things. You know, you start moving paint around that isn't quite dry. Um, I've thrown away many a painting because I've been impatient and just tried to crack on with one and it's not dry enough. So I'm lucky, but you know, I've got this lovely place to work and I've got all these heaters thrown away and the work's generally, um, most of the time, I've, I only turn these round so you can kind of see some work in progress, but they normally face the other way with the heat hitting them. Uh, and they can generally be dry. If I put them on at the end of a working day, about sort of four or five o'clock time, generally the next morning, these are dry enough to, uh, dry enough to work on. So I do employ sort of a, a a medium that I use with mixing it with the oils, which has got a drying agent in it. Um, that's obviously a big help as well. Because you want to start, you know, you want to come in the next morning and crack on. Yeah. You know, um, and that's why you're usually work, working on quite a few paintings at the same time, aren't you? Yeah, it's a case of being practical, really. Um, you, can't, you can't just start one and then finish it. There's always so many layers that have to go on of different processes and the work needs to be dry before you can progress it to the next level. So, um, you know, it'd be too easy to just start one and then think, well, what should we do now? Well, I might as well go down the pub. <laughs> well, you can't do that. You've got to just start another picture and then you can just keep, keep it going. Uh, it's, it's always good to have something on the easel as well. Just at the end of the day, I'll always, you know, an old, uh, an old gallery manager actually going back years said, always have something on the easel, mate. Always have something on the easel. So when I finish at the end of the day, I'll always just stick the next one for tomorrow's work, we'll go on the easel so I can walk through the door the next morning and it's there. And you're in, you can, you can get moving straight away. So why don't you tell us what's in these two exciting chests? Oh, that's my entire publishing career. <laughs> Your what? Uh, so how like many Chris. editions have you got? There's something like, I think my publisher's Washington Green, I've released something like 130 images of mine now in 20 years. And you've got all of them they're here. All, they're all just stacked up in here. That's it's, amazing. It's, it, 
it becomes a bit of an issue. Yes, here we go. There we go. They're all just all piled up. Um, and it becomes, you start to wonder where you're going to keep them. But, I mean, this goes back to 2004. Um, I remember that. I remember submitting that original, actually. Mm. And Paul Green said to me, who's the most critical, you might mind me saying this for you, he's hypercritical, and I learned a lot by listening to him, but he said that was a magnificent painting. I thought, well, if he says it is, it must be. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, all my prints are all just stacked up. Stacked up in these. Lots of them. Amazing. So I think someone also asked what materials you use. Um, well, as we've said earlier, it's all, it's all oil paints, traditional oils. And um, what's the brand that you're using? Well, predominantly it always used to be, what they, a lot of people, uh, other artists will know the name Windsor and Newton. They're probably the biggest and, most well-known supplier of oils. But a few years ago, I discovered this guy, Michael Harding, who makes these handmade oils. Um, and they're lovely. They're a little bit more expensive, but the colours are so vibrant, they're so strong, that you, actually sometimes you don't need so much of it because it's such a, a, a powerful tone, powerful hue. Um, and I love those, absolutely love them. Um, so it's that, together with a glazing medium, which is made by the same company, Michael Harding. It's called a Damar glaze, and it's all um, natural materials. There's no resins or plastics. Um, and that aids, well, several things really. It, make, it helps the paint flow a little bit better. It gives it a, um, a lustre as well, a glazing sort of lustre. Um, and it's also got a drying agent in it as well. So all those things together, yeah, that's probably what helps them dry overnight when they're on those heaters because it's it's got this drying agent. It's not like acrylics, it's not, you know, like pick your fingers and it's dry. It's still hours and hours and hours. Days actually in some of the little darker colours. Um, and then brushes wise, um, well I'm not fiddling around with a little plastic palette knife. I use these, these are by a company called Da Vinci. And I, I these have changed my life actually. I, they are so soft and smooth um, and when I want to take out any of the imperfections, not imperfections, but all the little palette knife marks here, just by dragging this slowly, gently across the surface, you start to blend the paint. You're not putting any paint on and you're not taking it off. You don't want to take too much of it off either. Um, and this is where I used to, when I used to do the whole thing with the finger painted things and I used to take all the finger marks out with these brushes. Still the same brush, but I'm just taking out the marks that have been left by the palette knife and just leaving nice soft soft tones. So it's softening everything. Like that. Amazing. And you'll still I mean I'll still probably sand this down when that's dry, I'll still go over with my fifteen hundred grit sandpaper to take out any nasty little imperfections and, and bring it to to a, you know, a smoother sort of conclusion. But so all... I think that's us done now. Okay, well, I hope that's been of interest to people and I hope it's been a little bit of fun. And um, in the future, that, uh, we can do something like this again. Thanks very and much. you're back on tour, aren't you? I'm back very on tour soon. in uh, October and November. We've got another seven shows to do all over the UK, actually. Exeter, Canterbury, Oxford, Milton Keynes... Manchester, one or two others that I can't remember, but yeah, <laughs> out there again and very much looking forward to it. And if you want to see Lawrence doing this in real life, come then along. please come along. Please come along. I might even give you a brush. Whoa. I'll thrust you into the limelight. You can never go yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.